Hey everybody, Pastor Mark here, coming to you for this week's worship video, and this week is August 27, 2023. Thank you so much for joining me. I'm here at the churches of St. Luke Lutheran and St. John Lutheran. I hope that this will be a blessing for us all. Now, if you read the passages listed on the previous slide, I would draw your attention in particular to that middle passage, that is from Paul's letter to the Romans. Now, I should uh, give you a little bit of background here. Paul is writing to Christians who are in the city of Rome. And presumably, these are Christians who are coming from a little bit different background than Paul has come from. That is, Paul was raised Jewish. He was raised hardcore Jewish, okay? And, and by that I mean that he knows the Old Testament of the Bible really, really well. He was taught it since he was very, very young. And he, Paul, became actually a deep student of it and ultimately became a member of the group of uh, the teachers known as the Pharisees. And so he knows his Old Testament really well. He knows and understands Jewish law. And so he is coming at this business of God in Christ in a different way than those people that he's writing to. See, because they were not raised in Jewish thought. They were not taught the Bible, the Old Testament, the way Paul was. In fact, it is likely that these are Gentile, that is non-Jewish Christians, and that they probably have a background where their religion was some sort of pagan worship. That is, they probably worshiped gods and goddesses. And the way that worked for them, what that did to their worldview, the way that they looked at life, the way they looked at how things work, is that you did things to please the gods and the goddesses. Um, you'd make sacrifices, you would do special rituals and acts and things like that. Anything you could to try to get an atten uh, the attention of a god to favor you. And then, if you had wealth or status or influence or power, that is, if somehow in the, well, in the world's view of things, you rose up to some level of achievement and recognition, that meant the gods favored you. And so the idea was, if you did more stuff to make the gods and goddesses happy, they would make you happy, okay? And when you looked at other people then, and you saw how powerful some of them were, you realized that they were favored by the gods too. And if you saw people that were not, say, wealthy, or had much social status, uh, that they were pretty low on the totem pole, well, they clearly were not pleasing the gods and goddesses, okay? So many of them had this worldview. And Paul mentions something along these lines in this reading for today. And he says right here, uh, I appeal to you by the mercies of God to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. Now, that's very different from what many of those pagan religions practiced. Uh, you, you kill some sort of animal, sacrifice an animal, shed some blood, uh, and that would please the gods. You might offer baskets of really nice fruit or whatever. It depended on which god, you know, you were trying to please, trying to get the attention of. Um, but you would do all these things, again, to gain their favor. And often it involved the shedding of blood or, or death, you know, killing something to, to please the god, to get their attention. And so here Paul, first of all, is kind of saying something rather contradictory to that idea where he says a living sacrifice. And notice, he doesn't say, you know, get a, an animal of some sort, but rather present yourself as a living sacrifice. And the idea there is, it's not about doing some random act to get the gods and goddesses' attention. Rather, it's that you yourself are involved in a living, loving relationship with your God. And that is what's important. And so your whole life then is a living sacrifice. Now, another part of this is that many of the pagan uh, rituals and practices were 
pretty, well, I guess we'd say sinful, <laughs> scandalous. They involved all sorts of different things that you would do with your body. Uh, it might be involved with ingesting some sort of uh, hallucinogenic type of drugs or something to try to have a vision or whatever. Um, it might involve sex. That was a big part of many of those pagan religions. But there were all these different things that you would do that we would most likely consider rather immoral um, or just flat out wrong to do, not good for you healthy or morally. And Paul is essentially here saying, no, don't, don't do that, okay? Rather, with your body, make it a living sacrifice to God. And, and again, what he says here, holy and acceptable. So that is, do things that are in keeping with God's will in your body. And do things as a way to live for him. And that is, as Paul says, your spiritual act of worship. So, first off, he's encouraging them to live in a way that is pleasing to God. Um, that would include things like following the Ten Commandments, following the other different uh, laws and, and commands that God has given us about loving one another and loving him and serving one another and so forth. And also, don't do things that are destructive to you. Don't do things that destroy relationships. Don't do things that go against the way that God designed you. So live in a way that is pleasing to God because, again, God designed us. He knows what's best for us. And that's the whole point of the Ten Commandments, really, is that we live in a way that is pleasing for him and good for us. And so that's what Paul is telling them to do. It's not about sacrificing some animal or going through some weird ritual, but rather living in a way that follows God's will, that serves his people, that shows your love for him. And when we do that, it's good for us. Not, not in the sense of earning God's favor so that we get special stuff like money or, or fame or whatever, but simply because we want to show him our love. And when we do those things, yeah, it is a blessing for us because then we're living the way we're designed to live. And so things naturally work out pretty well. Now, that's one part of it. Uh, this idea of living according to God's will because you love him. And that's your spiritual act of worship, Paul says. So that's one thing. Second thing is this next line. He says, I say to everyone among you, not to think of yourself more highly than you ought. Okay? But realize that each different person in the church, in the body of Christ, that they all have different gifts, they have different talents, they have different roles to play. And that doesn't mean that one person is better than the other. So Paul is saying that this is not about me looking at others and seeing like, wow, I'm really successful at this or that thing in the world and, and that person isn't. And so that means I'm better than that person, that maybe it means that God loves me more. No, that's not it at all. Paul points out, don't think more highly of yourself than you ought. Uh, he says, for as in one body we have many members, and the members do not all have the same function. So too, we, though many, are one body in Christ, and we are members one of another, and we have different gifts. And so whatever different gifts that God has given each one of us, excel in those gifts. And, and Paul gives some examples like uh, prophecy, uh, service, um, exhorting or, or encouraging others, um, contributing, leading, you know, whatever it is, whatever your gifts are, use those for the good of God's people. And don't look down on others who aren't as good as you in certain things, who aren't as gifted as you are in certain areas. But realize that their gifts are from God as well. And so Paul takes the idea of, of social status or the way the world looks at things as uh, if you achieve this or do this or, or whatever it is that you're better than others who don't get up here. No, that's not it at all. The fact is we are God's people in Christ. All of us beloved children. We all have different gifts. We have different uh, talents. We have different places and stations in life. Some of us are going to be in, in areas of higher influence, or we might have more wealth, or we're going to be in positions of leadership. Others are going to be really gifted at serving others. And maybe it's not the glorious and flashy job, but many of the talents and gifts we have are things that are much more behind the scenes, not quite so visible but just as important. And everybody in God's church has those different roles. 
So, offer yourselves as living sacrifices to God. That's your spiritual act of worship. That is the idea of living for, for Him and according to His will, which is good for you and it's good for everybody that you deal with and they get to see God at work in you. So, you're giving glory to Him. And realize that everybody in God's church has different roles. Everybody in the body of Christ has different gifts and all of them are valuable and cherished and they're from God. So we can look at others not as if they're better or worse than we are or they're higher or lower status than we are, but rather they are beloved children of God just like we are. And we can look at them that way and treat them that way and know that this isn't about being better than somebody else. Rather, this is about enjoying God's love to the fullest in our relationships with others and in our relationship with Him. And when we do that, it's not about being better then. It's about enjoying His blessings. So my friends, I hope that will give you some encouragement to, to think about the ways that you look at other people. To think about the ways that you look at yourself in, in terms of what has God given you in area of talent and gifts. What has he given you for your skills? What are you really good at that you can use to serve him and his people and give him glory? In Jesus' name, amen. Now may the peace of God, which passes all human understanding, keep our hearts and minds in Christ Jesus until life everlasting. Amen. My friends, again, I'm grateful to you for sharing this time with me. I hope that it's got you thinking about things in your life and about the people in your life and how God works in your life. Enjoy it, my friends. God's peace to you.